you're designing systems using PCI Express switches, or if you're designing an SOC with an embedded switch, I'd like to tell you about how you can use an embedded endpoint to improve the performance, reduce the latency, and dramatically reduce the gate count. Let me show you. The first question is, why a PCI Express switch in the first place? Well, it's an important and essential part of the PCI Express architecture. PCI Express is essentially a point-to-point -point protocol. There's one root port, sometimes referred to as root complex, that talks to one endpoint. And as you can see from this diagram, that's pretty limiting. If that's all there was for PCI Express, PCI Express would not be the pervasive architecture that it is today. So you need a switch. If you look on the right-hand side, you'll see the switch is a central part of the PCI Express architecture. It essentially allows a root port to talk to a lot of different devices. And you can see in the diagram what we're showing, in this case, is four separate PCI Express endpoints. And traditionally, the function of the switch, as well as the upstream port, the CPU with its memory and root port, are separate SOCs. So what we're talking about today, for the advantages of using an embedded endpoint, is really geared toward when you decide you're building an application with an embedded switch. So let's take a look at that. On the left, you see an SOC with an embedded switch. And you can see I've got some applications that are running externally on their own chips here, labeled App1 through App M. And they communicate via an external link, via a PHY. So we go through the PCI Express protocol on each of these links. We leave this SOC that I've shown above and talk to these separate applications in their own chips. Then on the right-hand side of the same diagram, you see the embedded endpoints, these two blocks with the blue showing the embedded applications. So what we've done here is essentially eliminated the need for this external phi and this external application, and we've pulled it right inside the SOC. And that's what you see here. Now, if you look at this a little more closely, what we've really done is streamline things quite a bit. So not only have we removed the phi's, as you can see here, we've removed a lot of the other logic that's not required in order to get your application uh, talking to the host. So we've kind of compressed the downstream switch port together with an endpoint and created what we're calling an embedded endpoint. And what's neat about this is, as far as the host is concerned, up here at the upstream port talking to us, it doesn't know the difference. When it's talking to an embedded endpoint here on the right, it thinks it's talking to another endpoint. It could be the same as these external endpoints shown on the left. So let's look at a couple of the features of the embedded endpoint. It's really an optimized, low latency solution for placing your application logic within the switch and within your SOC. Because remember, again, we're talking about embedded switch. It's an endpoint downstream of a switch port, but within the same ASIC. And again, I refer you to the diagram. You can see the traditional way of building a switch these endpoints are external, and they're communicating via a phi. So the nice thing about the embedded endpoint is there's no need for this physical link at all. Not only do you get rid of the physical link, the phi's, but you get rid of the link training and status state machines as well. It's a lot of logic you don't need. So we eliminate a lot of this redundant logic that you need when you're connecting two phi's. And we implement this in such a way that we completely support the PCI Express hierarchy. And again, it's transparent to the host. It doesn't know we're talking to an embedded endpoint versus a traditional endpoint. And we maintain configurability, so we support a lot of features um, within this. The bus width can be anywhere from 32 all the way up to 512. And the interface to the application can be using a native interface to the controller. In the case of Synopsys, the Synopsys native interface or an AMBA interface. So let's take a look at how we really get an optimized solution for embedded endpoint. The first reference point is the standard external switch implementation. So if you look at this block diagram on the left, what we're seeing is at the top the downstream switch port controller, and we're showing the different layers that are in there, the transaction layer, the link layer, the physical layer, and also the um, application dependent modules that are part of our uh, nomenclature for our controller. And that communicates to a PHY through a pipe interface, which is shown here. The PCI Express PHY then talks across a channel. This channel could be a, a card, a backplane. Uh, there's even some cabling solutions. It's one way for the serial communication to take place 
from one phi to another. So on the other side of that channel is another phi connected through a pipe interface to another controller, but in this case, as you see on the left, the controller is an endpoint controller. And again, we have to go through the physical layer, the link layer, the transaction layer, and then into our application. And here I'm showing an AMBA bridge. Of course, that's an optional block, but we're showing it. So that's the way it looks in the conventional sense when you're using an external switch chip. So when we go to an embedded switch and an embedded endpoint, we can start to do things that look more like this. Now, we've removed the physical links completely. The channel's gone and the two phi's are gone. And what I'm showing here is a conventional pipe-to-pipe -pipe implementation of embedded endpoint. So this is pretty efficient. We've gotten rid of some of the logic and we've gotten rid of some of the latency. We're not serializing and deserializing anymore. We're going directly from the pipe-to-pipe. -pipe. There's no need to go serial at all. So that's a reasonably good implementation. But what if we could take it further? Let's take a look at what we've done at Synopsys. So we take this now and we rip out all this redundant logic that we don't need. Essentially, completely compressing together what we need from the downstream port with what we need from the endpoint to create a truly optimized single embedded endpoint solution that looks like that. Now, that's not drawn to scale, but it almost is to scale, surprisingly, when you look at some of the numbers. So let's take a look on the next slide. So what we're looking at here are real numbers that show the kind of reduction that you can achieve in area as well as in latency by going to a fully optimized embedded endpoint solution like what we have at Synopsys. Now, the numbers I'm showing here are area reduction in the top chart compared to the pipe-to-pipe -pipe embedded endpoint I showed to the fully optimized embedded endpoint from Synopsys. And it varies depending on the width of the interface. I'm just showing 32 up to 256 here. But you can see, even in a worst case, the reduction in gates is 64%. Best case, I'm showing, is a reduction of 84%. So that means the optimized embedded endpoint solution from Synopsys will be implemented with about 16% of the total number of gates that you would need for a conventional pipe-to-pipe -pipe solution. And there's a similar reduction, not quite as dramatic, but still significant in latency. And again, it kind of varies as you go from 32 bits all the way up to 256 bits, ranging from a reduction of 58% all the way up to 71%. So implementing this optimized embedded endpoint solution, in this case at 256 bits, would give you about 30% of the latency of using a pipe-to-pipe -pipe solution. So you've seen the benefits of the Synopsys embedded endpoint controller IP and how it can dramatically improve the performance of your PCI Express switch. This is available today, it supports all the features of PCI Express, including the latest 5.0, 32 giga transfers per second data rate. It's available for you as standalone IP if you're building your own switch, or it can be bundled together with our multi-port switch IP from Synopsys. Thanks for watching.